What is the true essence of black girl magic? Each week, I sit down for a deep and meaningful conversation with some of Africa's most inspiring women and hear their stories of love, loss, and second chances. My name is Dawn Spade. Join me on this journey of discovery. Hers was one of the most prominent and powerful voices to emerge from the South African jazz scene in the early 2000s. Her house is filled with accolades that include a South African Music Award, the Cora Award, a Metro FM Award and a Crown Gospel Award. Her name is Swazi Zamini. And she also happens to be my cousin. Well, in the way Africans talk about cousins. Swazi is the eldest of three kids born to her parents, Mrs. Tandi and the late big boy Zamini. She is married to Tepom Goma, a renowned musician in his own right and son of South African music legend Sibongile Kumalo. She's also a mother to three of her own children. Swazi is strong-willed, determined and sure, traits that can often be mistaken for arrogance. What many don't get the pleasure of witnessing is her humor, intelligence, kindness, and generosity. But above all this, she is a God-fearing, God-loving woman who serves in full-time ministry at her church, ECG, while continuing to pursue her calling as a musician. Over the past 10 years, Swazi has had more than her fair share of ups and downs in both her professional and personal life. I wanted to chat about the lessons she has learned, her thoughts on getting older, and how she handles the increasing demands of life. This is my deep and meaningful conversation with Swazi Zamini. What does womanhood okay. mean to you? I think it came for me much earlier on in life okay. when I had my first child. Wow, okay. Um, I had my son when I was... I think 20, 24, okay. 24, 25. Okay. And now it kind of gives away how old I am. Because yeah. <laughs> he's about, he's four, 14. 14, yeah. yeah. Um, so when, when I had my first child, that's when I think I owned the fact that now I am a woman because okay. then everything kind of shifted. Yeah. My responsibilities just became amplified yeah. and... Um, I was no longer living for myself, yeah. but I had this person that yeah. I had to take care of. Yeah. And it almost happened simultaneously because I got my first child, and mm. then when he was two, I got married, and then I was pregnant with my second child. Okay. So I sort of had to come into my own much quicker than, than what I had planned or what, what people anticipate, yeah. or I need to be in my 30s or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know that kind of, of pressure of... Oh my God, I'm getting old. Okay. I just, yes, I get freaked by when I turned 35. Yeah. I I went into depression for like maybe a month or two yeah. because I felt ill. I'm old. I'm old. Yeah. But when I when I was 35 and now I'm progressing and I'm so close to 40. To 40 yeah. I realized that actually 45 is knocking and then yeah. 50. Yeah. And then 55. Yeah. You cannot stop the wheels from turning. Yeah, yeah very it's, true. It's, it's, it's a way of life. So what, what you do is you kind of embrace it and you learn how to run with it. Okay. Um, I had set goals like I'll, be, I'll make my first million at, at 35. Age, yeah. I think I made it at 38 yeah. uh, through my music. Yeah. And then I'm realizing that being a millionaire will really materialize. Whereby it's not that you've made the million, but yeah. it's in the bank and it's having exactly. interest at 40. Yeah, you know, um, where now whatever that I do in terms of my, my work brings stable revenue. Okay. So um, we, we, we get so fearful and so consumed about oh my god i'm getting old yeah oh my god i'm getting old yeah. that it can actually take away from the process of planning if i am old what, what? do i have to show where do you think that comes from like where where, where has this pressure because I, I mean i don't know if guys experience it you know i think but my, yeah but they're me, mature my, about my, it, yeah so my husband is so chilled and laid back you I know? know it doesn't help that i'm a year older than him so he spends more time teasing me about being a cool guy which then you know adds to the stress <laughs> and the pressure but i feel like at least outwardly mm -hmm. I, I feel more women than men 
spend a lot of time being consumed by I'm getting old. I think we're more expressive. We're more vocal about it. We are not uh, scared to actually say that we're getting old. Okay. We, we don't have a, a I think we get over things because we let things out also. Okay. Men kind of like are Hold reserved. It in. They want to be mature about it. Yeah. And you can't see him stress. Yeah. You can't see him. They have to hold it down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because if they don't, then who do we depend on? Exactly. In, 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 in yeah. essence. Yeah. So I think it, it, the, the pressure comes from... Is it internalized or is it, is it external in your opinion? I think it's both. Okay. It's both. It's a little bit of both. Internally because you have to be this woman who can handle everything yeah. and you set goals for yourself yeah. but externally because you look at your peers and you look at society and you look at the norm and yeah. you ask yourself so if so and so could do it at this age what, what am I doing back? Yeah. you know yeah. so it's both external and internal but yeah. I think it's a it's a good challenge overall yeah. because then it keeps us uh, on our toes and yeah. it gets us thinking and we mm. are not lax and yeah. actually achieve something. Yeah. I think we also don't celebrate vintageness or, 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 or the essence of being older. We don't celebrate maturity, at, at least from a public perspective. We spend a lot of time, I feel, you know, like I only now I feel that I'm looking at women, but when I'm trying to even think now of older women mm. that I'm holding up mm. there, there's not that many mm-hmm. that I'm like, yo, I mm. like the, the strength, do you know, mm. because I feel like actually with age comes mm. that level of strength and that maturity and the, and the way you carry yourself because of that experience. Given the space that, that I work in in terms of music, yeah. uh, apart from the fact that I'm a vintage lover, yeah. I do all, <laughs> all things all vintage things, in yeah. terms of my dress, yeah. uh, decor, etc. But I've, I've grown up in a space whereby the old women were there. Okay. I've grown up in a space whereby I've had conversations with Mambo and Shongo. Okay. And uh, my mother-in-law is Swongi yeah. Kumalo. And I've, I've shared coffee with Mam Doris and Masuga and she's wow, imparted. Wow, that's precious. And I've had a moment with, with Mam Letambulu, you know. Yeah. So I think it, it depends on what's available to you. In your environment. Some people may not be as blessed or fortunate as I have been to yeah. actually have access to those people. Yeah. Then they have no other voice to actually speak into yeah. their lives. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it also depends on what you want as a person. Yeah. If, if, you, if you look at Swazi as an older woman, which now I can boldly call myself an older woman, For because real. at 38, I believe that it's somebody getting there. Who, is, <laughs> who is in their early 20s yeah. should look at me and I find inspiration. And, yeah, and, and then I should reciprocate that because somebody gave it to me. That's I cool. should actually be able to say to an upcoming uh, young lady who aspires to be one, a clothing designer or a musician or a writer or whatever it is that I do, I should be able to say, this is how I did it yeah, and paved the way. tried this way so yeah. that you don't make the mistakes that I did. Coming up, we chat about the lessons she has learned. The fact that somebody made a comment about my hair being blonde. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, no, it's not fit for a pastor's wife. Uh, Do you have blonde hair? I'm like, scripture? Yeah. Chapter? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you Let's know, go. and and also if if God, if I feel that God is comfortable with who I am, yeah. do I really care? And then later, we live in a world where, you know, limiting beliefs and limited thinking is accepted, and in some environments, it's actually encouraged, not to put anyone down or any institution down. But look at our educational system; it, it it's bound by who you can be, who you can't be. We're taught that, you know, as a uh, academic excellence student, you are expected to achieve more pressures. But yet, even inside that more, that that higher achievement, there's still a limiting belief there. Do you think for you, is there anything you, that is holding you back from anything, whether it's yourself, um, your own self-talk, the way you think, or external things? I I I think I've I've sort of shed it off and but it, it comes every now and again when it gets an opportunity. People's opinions of who I am okay. and, and or people's perception or people's um diagnosis of how I do things. Yeah. Uh, the church that I go to. I hear you. Um, the I should not be dancing because Mm. I'm big or I'm big I should be slim or you know 
those are things that really used to hold me back. Yeah. Um, until I got to a space whereby I love myself so much yeah. that I actually don't care. That's good. And um, and I learned how to be me and celebrate me and 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 actually found out that there's actually people who draw inspiration from who I am just the way you are um, you know so sometimes somebody will make a comment that will irritate me and I'll lash out I, I'm saying it holds me back in that regard but okay. like somebody made a comment about my hair being blonde yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then I like, no it's not fit for a pastor's wife uh, yeah, blonde hair. Yeah, blonde hair. I'm like scripture yeah chapter yeah let's go <laughs> <laughs> you Let's know, go. And, and also, if, if God, if I feel that God is comfortable with who I am, yeah. do I really care? Yeah. Do you have a cross where yeah. you, you know, hung for me? Yeah. And then, is there grace that yeah. you went that, into? That can tell me if he has issues no, you know. with the way I look. And that's, that's about, you know, if my husband loves me for who I am and God is okay with me, then yeah. I'm fine. So, occasionally, like, I'll get a little bit cheesed off, ticked off by something that somebody says. But yeah. I remember that, actually, I don't give a damn. Yeah. Mm. I like that. I, 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 I want to get fully to that place, I think. It, it's a process. It's a, yeah. It's a, a day-to-day -day thing. I mm. can't say that I fully have it down, mm. uh, but it's a, it's a process. I can't tell you that I'm, I'm beyond the 50% mark. Yeah, because, that's good. Um, I don't know. I just feel if you're not paying my bills, you're not buying me food, you're not clothing me, mm. why should you have a set? <laughs> it's such a stronger say and a stronger hold that it, it actually then Affects has... me. Mm. Mm. It's insane, isn't it? It is. When you just think about it, like... People have got nothing to do about anything. Yeah, people write stuff on Instagram and... And you're like, oh my God, they said my hips are too big. Oh, what, my hips are too big. <laughs> I gave birth to children. I've got three kids. Come on. As Brilliant. a matter of fact, my hips are beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Some people don't have hips. You know, they wish they could carry it like <laughs> I do. <Yes. laughs> I feel you. Okay, what are the things you believe are inevitable? And, and therefore you have to have this... Because this is inevitable, you better get on board change the fact that you are going to grow up and be 40 and be 45 you you can't change that process yeah so you adapt do you want to be a 40 or 45 year old that has got midlife crisis i'd rather not uh so you you learn how to adapt and you have coping mechanisms kids yeah their they, 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 their personalities and what they're going to bring into your space. Mm. You can't control that. Yeah. You have kids, you, you want them to grow up a certain way. Bible says train up a child in a way that he will not depart from it. You do all of that. Mm. But what's inevitable is the fact that they have their own mind. They're, they're going own to people. make their own decisions. Yeah. And they're not going to be the ones that you like most of the time. <laughs> so you need to learn that they actually have uh, their own personalities. And what helps me is I gave my, my parents how a few times. So I'm like, okay, that's still better than what, what I did. What goes around comes yeah. around. You know? That's still better than what I do. Um, what else? I think I think change in any in literally because even that with the, with the kids, it's still change mm. in any in any area of my life. I must make room for the fact that things will not always be the, be same. the same. Yeah, that's good. Cool. But I need to adapt. I need to be progressive in my thinking and in the way that I do things so that things never collide in such a way that I can't You fall apart, yeah. You know, And so you need to be prepared, I suppose. Yeah. If, you, if you are thinking that change is inevitable, mm -hmm. then your mentality will change in the sense that you are expecting change to come and hopefully you've started to do some thinking. You don't prepare for change, but you adapt to change. Okay, that's good. I like that. And you don't prepare for change, but you adapt. Okay, so... Um, you used to have um, one car, but now you have two cars. Mm. So then, uh, what? <laughs> I'm gonna use this one because I don't like it. So Tepo wakes up and he takes the kids to school. Mm. And uh, when you have two cars now, it means that two people have to wake up and take one child this way. That yeah. change. Yeah. Uh, and you used so to you, stay so in you bed. adapt. So <laughs> I have to. I have to adapt to waking up in the morning. Yeah. Which I don't normally. You mm. know, I'm just using a, yeah, a, a no, silly, I feel you. I feel silly you. example, but. Um, let's let's do it the other way around. You used to have two cars, now you have one car, which is something that happened to us at some yeah. point. Um, whereby now 
he wants to go that way, I want to go that way, but we have to reach a compromise. That's it. You know, uh, and we fought so much about it too at some point. Like, yeah. no, but I don't get my things done. But I don't get my, my things, things done. done. And yeah. we're like, newsflash, we have one car, so how so do we do it? Yeah, let's, let's talk plan. about it. There's five days out. in a week. This yeah. is your day, this is my day. I want to do my things today. Great. Or in the morning, I do my things, and then you do. The change is inevitable. Yeah. But um, you, while you can't plan for it, you can You can adapt. adapt. I like that. You can adapt because just as you can get one car, there's Uber. So essentially, you do have two cars. You just have to think out of the box. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's it's, it's that. Okay. It's that. I and, like that. And um, the other thing that is inevitable for me is the fact that Christ is coming back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, likes it. Well, doesn't like it. Matter of fact, it's going to happen. Matter of fact, how do I? Um, that one, how do I better prepare myself okay. for that? Okay. Um, can't plan for it. No yeah. one knows the day nor the hour, but how yeah. do I better prepare myself? So that whenever it is, yeah. I'm found ready. That's awesome. Mm. I like that. Coming up, Swazi's strong willed, determined, and sure traits that can often be mistaken for arrogance. I think I'm a very stern boundary believer, okay. but the fault is in how I execute it. Okay. It it comes across as a little bit harsh and too bold and sometimes confrontational. Okay. But uh, I'm myspace.com. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to be wishy-washy about that. There's yep. no gray area. Yep. I invite you to my house. You come. I don't. Don't come. And then later, we're trained to be realistic, to be logical, to stay practical. And there's nothing realistic and logical about Steve Jobs and his journey. There's nothing realistical and logical about Dr. Martin Luther King and his willingness to be radical for a change that none of us saw coming. There's nothing realistic about Nelson Mandela leaving prison after 27 years and leading the largest forgiveness movement ever. There's nothing realistic and logical about even my journey. Born and raised in South Central Los Angeles, having three fights a week just to get home from school, you know, being told that I was the weakest writer my teacher had ever met. Yes. What would you say for you are areas in your life that you failed to place boundaries and have therefore suffered severe consequences? I think I'm a very stern boundary believer. Okay. But the fault is in how I execute it. Okay. It it comes across as a little bit harsh and too bold and sometimes confrontational. Okay. But uh, I'm my clear with calm. your boundaries. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not trying to be wishy washy about that. There's yep. no gray area. Yep. I invite you to my house. You come. I don't. Don't come. Yep. Um, you know, when yeah. I say, actually, I'm feeling tired. I'm tired. Then yeah. it means, you know, bye bye. <laughs> let's go. You know, yeah. and and it's helped me yeah. because um, then I'm able to to separate work, family, and 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 and. Yeah, I've got so many pockets that need to be managed differently. That's it. And if I don't, then then I have I have a problem. Yeah. The only person whom I struggle yeah. where boundaries are concerned yeah. is my last one. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> that, that's about the only yeah. person. But I mean, it, it, otherwise I would not have coped. Yeah. I needed to be able to, to say, okay, this is me and my husband. And in this space, no child exists. Yeah. Even if there's a child who's trying to interfere, I'm yeah. with daddy right now. Please yeah. do not. Yeah. And it's time for me and my kids. Yeah. And it's time for me and my work, and it's time for me and God. Yeah. I'm very, I don't know, I'm very clinical about such things. I'm a people pleaser. I'm working on it. Um, I've, I've, I don't know, I, I graduated from pleasing people like a ago. decade and a half ago. Oh, please take me back to school and show me <laughs> how it's done. I don't know, I just, I, I grew up in a family whereby my parents were very strong in terms of discipline. Okay. I think that influenced it okay. to an extent. Okay. Like I, I grew up with boundaries. You have to be at home at this at time. A time. And no, you cannot wear pants until you are eighteen. Wow. And I used to sneak out at the pair of jeans yeah. and wear yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. Eight, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> So yeah. I grew up in that environment. Yeah. So it was easy for me to implement Okay. And execute. But I found as I grew up that they actually came from a play a bad place. Okay. Because I felt that they were 
a must, they were the law. I was very rigid about them because I was given them in that way. Okay, I see. But you. I've over the years learned how to just soften Be it up a little it. bit, yeah. so that you know people still know where we stand yeah. and, and where to and where not to, yeah. but not in such a, a tigerish tone. I feel you. <laughs> no, I feel you. I think I think yeah, it's, it's a transition for most women mm. to find that balance mm. of being firm. I'm still working and at clear, it. Yeah, mm. but still having that that nurturing and, and gentler side mm. of them. How has loss showed up in your life? Ooh, it showed up one time too many that at some point I actually stopped caring about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, growing up as a, as a, a, a late teens into early 20s, right, probably until my 30s, yeah. I went through um, loss of one family members in terms of my aunts yeah. and my, my uncles and then my grandmothers. Yeah. It it was so frequent that I was like, what the heck? Yeah. Okay, so people die. Wow. Yeah. And at some point, I just stopped crying because wow. then you cry until you can't cry anymore. Yeah. You know. Um. So I I deal with one the loss of a person, which is death. I deal with it. So I just frequently. I, yeah. I I dealt with it so much that I've learned how to just cut. You know, somebody's dead. Okay. Um, maybe I saw rest in peace. Life. Like as a thing, we just say, yeah, life, life goes, goes on. on. Yeah, you know, yeah, I've, I've literally had to adopt the life goes on mentality. mentality. Mm. Um, a career. Yeah, I've 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 had um, moments where I was at my at the epitome of my of my success, mm. and then wake up and then you feel like. Oh, so they meant it when they said that uh, the music industry actually is as good as your next best. And then, and then I learned how to, okay, so the next best thing is in, but how do I now sustain? Yeah. Um, you know, you, you release a record, you have a single, you've got the awards for yeah. that season, and then at last you write it out for two to three years yeah. before somebody else actually picks up. Wow. And yeah. I've had to learn how to stay relevant when somebody else has, picked, has peaked so that I actually have longevity yeah. in, my, in, my, in my career. Yeah. That was not easy. Okay. That was not easy. There was a time where you doubt yourself. Yeah. Am, I not, am I not talented? Yeah. Uh, do I, have I lost my beautiful singing voice? Yeah. Did I, I overrate myself? Did I overrate myself? What's happening here? Why? Mm. Why? And sometimes you even evaluate, but I think I sing better than that. <laughs> so, uh, do you know <laughs> what I mean? So, like, yeah. it's, it's a, a huge blow. But I've had to learn that, um, you know, I think also what helped me was Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. where to everything there is a season. A season, yeah. I learned that everything has a season and yeah. you prepare for drought in this season of planting and rain okay. so that you have actually harvest. When the rain comes. And, yeah, yeah, and you also must be able, when, there is, when there's harvest and there's plenty, you must be able to store away some seed. So That's that, great. You know, so I learned how to cope wow. um, in terms of, of, of career. Um, it, it, everybody goes through a loss of something at some point. Yeah. We've lost a lot of people who are still stuck in a happenstance that either happened two years ago mm -hmm. or happened whenever it happened, but people haven't been given the skills or yes. the know-how mm. or they don't know people who yeah, actually yeah. experienced mm. similar things and then, mm. and then learning how to get over things. Mm. What was it for you that made you get up? That one disappointment does not dictate to the fact that I've got kids to feed. Okay, so, so responsibility for that, you. Yes, that that one, that one setback or that one um, uh, circumstance does not does not make everything else around me less important. Okay, I, I still have to. I'm alive. Yeah, I have no choice. I'm yeah. gonna have to wake up in the morning. Yeah, if I'm gonna wake up and mope around, I've wasted a day. But my child needs to go to school in that day, and yeah. she needs to eat. Yeah, and my husband needs a wife. Yeah, and uh, there's probably somebody somewhere who needs a song that mm. is going to lift them up of yeah. the situation that I don't know about. Yeah, I cannot base my life on this one thing that's that so I have good. no control over. That's so good. When I can make a difference on everything else that's still available that for so me good. to make impact. That is so good. It has happened. It's passed. It's hap you can't change it. Mm. It's happened. You mm. can't. You can't change it. That's good. It's happened. It's, yeah. be it's behind it's you. It's done. It's behind you. And God says, He holds tomorrow. That's huh? good. So, um, 
you're worrying about something that's happened that you can't you change, can't change. That you've got no control yes. over and God says he holds your tomorrow you don't want to find out what tomorrow has in store for you because of something that happened yes. that you have no control over that's I cool. know it doesn't dismiss the pain yeah. it doesn't um, dismiss the loss that's very and good. you are alive in the present it's and not going to stop the sun the from coming up mm -hmm. it's not going to stop the moon from rising mm -hmm. it's not going to stop um, the days or the calendar months to be to be moving forward. Mm. It's happened. Coming up, thoughts on getting older. If we have weight like issues, that. let's talk about it. I like that. Are we losing weight? Are we trimming down? Yeah. Uh, would I, I prefer like you to just go to gym a little bit so that I you like know? That. Let's be open let's, about let's it. Let's talk let's about it. Let's be open like, you know. about yeah. it. I am the first one to say I think I'm fat, and my husband's like, No, you're not. You're losing weight, and I'm like, You're lying. And then he's like, Yeah, I have to lie because we're <laughs> about to have a midlife crisis yeah, or so whatever. Yeah, so it's You know. And then later, and there wasn't even anyone around me that had an idea of how to help me. All there was was my intuition, my internal GPS, my internal God placement system, and the will and the desire and the big dream inside my belly. And I was willing to keep at it until I birthed something greater than myself. In order to live the life you love and love the life you live, you have to be willing to step on the other side of normal, on, on the other side of where people give you permission to step. You have to be willing to step on the other side of realistic. You have to be willing to dream big. We're talking about the, the reason why sex is such an awkward conversation mm. um, between churches and, and I think actually it, it's both a matter of between people of faith and people without faith. Like, I haven't, like I, ha I haven't necessarily met non-Christians who are like, who had sex with my husband, it was amazing. Do you know, in that sense, it's just something we just don't, whether boyfriend or husband or whatever it was, I don't feel that it's something that... You hang around the wrong non-Christian. Lord, <laughs> let me find new friends. <laughs> let them be a breath of fresh air. Come on, friends. But I think, um, really, it goes back to um, the conversations that we've never had, mm. or the conversations that we've had from a church perspective, mm. the Pentecostal background that I don't even want to mention, mm. like I said, um, that, that you and I are both aware of. Yeah. Um, Where you were saying just getting a boyfriend is an sense. abomination, you should be kicked out of the because church. Because then so if you have, have a boyfriend, then it means you're sleeping with him automatically. Yeah, because you can't date. No, you can't. Not you can't just someone. go and eat and watch a movie and yeah. talk yeah. and find out and pick somebody's brain and yeah. find out if yeah. they're the right match for you yeah. and find out if you'd be able to figure out what you want. Will you be able to sit on a couch like this with yeah. this person for the rest of yeah. your life and talk? Yeah. Can you, you just sit for five minutes with the guy exactly. and you figure it out? No, like, you what? You're dating. Mm. Oh my God, you're pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> that is, you know what my mom used to say to me? <laughs> no joke. But my mom... Don't look at boys before pregnant. Yeah, no. But this, this is how the sex conversation... <laughs> I love you, mommy. I love you. This is how the sex conversation <laughs> went with my mom. The second you start sleeping with boys, I will know. She want to know how the back of your knees will go in. And that's how I'll know. I was told the front of your knees start having holes. <laughs> <laughs> the mess. It's, it's for us though, I, I reckon, with our daughters, to turn it around and change that entire I think conversation. it starts with this type of thing. Yeah. Um, deep and meaningful conversation. Yeah. If you find people that are like-minded. Yeah. Socially. Yeah. Faith and otherwise. Yeah. Firstly, learn how to keep them. Great, that's So good. that they become a go-to place yeah. for things that you really need to be real about. Yeah. So if you have those girlfriends that you can be open with, learn how to keep them. And yeah, be that's real. good. And be real girls, be real girls, be, a re be so fake. Oh. Be real. Like, honestly, in my, in my inner core, I don't think I have more than... Three. Nice. And it's real there. It's real. And I'm not going to even tell you who they are because yeah. then, I mean, after this, You're gonna be in trouble. then I'm going to get phone calls. But, you I, but I was your inner core. Yeah. And, I was like, and I'm like, and then I have to explain why you're not what? my inner core. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm. um, I think when we, when we, it's, it's, it's what my husband and I try to do. When we have couples that we cook with, mm. socialize. Yeah. Start with a dinner or whatever, movie, yeah. bowling or whatever. Yeah. You will find that the more you become comfortable in each other's space, the more you open up. Is the more the conversations start to happen. That's good. And um, 
but also mindset. I think young Christian couples, I don't know, I don't think we qualify for young anymore. We're 12 yeah. years married. Hmm. Um, young Christian couples need to, to, to break the stereotype and break the norm. Yeah. Um, whereby, yes, you're supposed to show your husband respect hmm. to the point of kneeling on the floor. But if your husband is not fussy about that type of thing, chill. Don't, girl, you know. Chill. Like I always say, my husband doesn't fuss about eggs and bacon in the morning. Mm. He honestly doesn't. He's got no problem getting a box of cereal and doing it and himself. putting milk in it and having breakfast. Mm. On the occasion that I wake up, I wake up and I say pancakes. He's like, Oh yeah, yeah baby. Or I say yeah. Uh, waffles or breakfast. He's like, oh, This is him, but <laughs> yes. yes, but not. Also, when I do yeah. it all the time, it seems it's ritualistic. Mm, it's like There's the, no appreciation. Yeah, like it's a norm, I feel et cetera, et cetera. I feel you. You know, and and also, I think that till death do us part thing, which is what I call as long as we both shall live, mm. um, is is it 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 got me open minded about my relationship with my husband. Okay. So if this is gonna be the only person yeah. I live with yeah. for as long as we both shall live. Yeah. I need to be comfortable in the fact that my bum will change. Is big. <laughs> yeah. And I need to be able to walk butt naked in front of him. And be okay. Light with that. on. Yeah. And flaunt it. By the God. Like I am a size thirty two. Mother Mary. And if he doesn't appreciate that yeah. he needs to learn. <laughs> because now he's also so as long as we shall leave, this the, is the Bhutan. This is what I have. So how do we work with it? If we have weight like issues, that. let's talk about it. I like that. Are we losing weight? Are we trimming down? Yeah. Uh, would I, I prefer like to just go to gym a little bit so that, I you know. I like that. Let's be open let's, about let's it. Let's talk It'd about it. Let's be gentle and kind. Like, you know, but yeah. I, I'm the first one to say, I think I'm fat. And my husband's like, no, you're not. You're losing weight. And I'm like, you're lying. And then he's like, yeah, I have to lie. <laughs> because you're about to have a midlife crisis. Yeah, it's very so good. You know. And, yeah, I and, like that. And I like you when you're wearing this that and that. Why don't you put this and that and that's that? That's nice. That? Because now you are, um, we are Zenzela. You know, you are creating your yeah. life for yourself. You know, if you don't tell him that um, you you don't like um, shorts, that yeah, are a, a butt shorts on yeah. a guy, yeah. he's gonna wear them. Not knowing. until he, but yeah. you're like, actually, what's more attractive for me? Is yeah, this. I find you more. Yeah, when but that's another problem that we have. Yeah, especially. As black people, yeah. we're talking about what we like. We're like, no, 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 no. The man is the head of the house. He should just figure you must it out. just cook and clean. It's 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 2017. It's a lot, ne? I don't remember the last time I cooked, it's but I know my husband ate. <laughs> Me, I have personal chefs at Woolworths. I just go Woolworths, and they go, yeah, it's on the rack. I'm like, yeah. What's 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 for dinner today? Yeah, yeah. thanks, Woolworths mm -hmm. and Spa. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm afraid we have to cut it short. This has been we amazing. I know, we can go on forever. You know, I have a message for you, a very important message. We live in a world where, you know, limiting beliefs and limited thinking is accepted. And in some environments, it's actually encouraged not to put anyone down or any institution down. But look at our educational system. It, it, it's bound by who you can be, who you can't be. We're taught that, you know, as a... Uh, academic excellence student, you are expected to achieve more pressures, but yet even inside that more, that, that higher achievement, there's still a limiting belief there. You know, I look at my life today and it's barely recognizable. I, I'm, I'm grateful to say I have six bestsellers. I've sat with Oprah, with Larry King on CNN, Good Day LA. I've traveled all over the world, did work in Taipei and Africa and Kazakhstan, but that wasn't where I started. I started struggling for 12 years in the educational system not thinking I was good enough. The word fail or not pass was threaded through every year in school in some area or another. And so I, I, I graduated or got out. I mean, I graduated, but what did I graduate to? I graduated more of who, to more of who I think I might be able to be or who I couldn't be, but not my possibility. I, I look up and for the first 10, 15 years of my adulthood, I struggled. I struggled because I, I didn't dream big enough at that time. I didn't know. I felt like my dreams were covered and smothered with the cultural limitations, were defined by who our parents were, um, what our culture can do, what our community can do. So you look at all the areas of our lives, financially, mentally, emotionally, family, geographically, and all of those things kind of put us in a box. 
some of our boxes are this big, so we think they're amazing. Some of them are this big, and we know they're choking the life out of us. The reality is we're trained to be realistic, to be logical, to stay practical. And there's nothing realistic and logical about Steve Jobs and his journey. There's nothing realistical and logical about Dr. Martin Luther King and his willingness to be radical for a change that none of us saw coming. There's nothing realistic about Nelson Mandela leaving prison after 27 years and leading the largest forgiveness movement ever. There's nothing realistic and logical about even my journey. Born and raised in South Central Los Angeles, having three fights a week just to get home from school. You know, being told that I was the weakest writer my teacher had ever met and that I should never speak in public by my speech teacher to looking at my life today and, and going on and having a child before I got married and getting on government's assistance just to feed my baby, not having money to buy him pampers and wrapping my son in a towel for three days until I can afford to get money to buy him pampers. I look at my life and I wasn't supposed to be who I am today. Something turned, but it didn't come from outside. It didn't come from my culture or my, my community. It came from within. Who I was committed to transforming my life into just didn't fit. It didn't fit realistic. It didn't fit practical, and it didn't fit logical. I didn't know how I was going to get there. There were no examples of how I would get there. There was no instructions. There was no GPS. And there wasn't even anyone around me that had an idea of how to help me. All there was was my intuition, my internal GPS my internal God placement system and the will and the desire and the big dream inside my belly. And I was willing to keep at it until I burst something greater than myself. In order to live the life you love and love the life you live, you have to be willing to step on the other side of normal, on, on the other side of where people give you permission to step. You have to be willing to step on the other side of realistic. You have to be willing to dream big and give yourself a radical chance for a radical future and a breathtaking possibility. It starts with you, I promise. Thank you so much, Thank babe. You. This it's is like, this pleasure. is really been good. Um, we'll do this again, I promise. The conversation with Swazi affirmed what many of the other remarkable guests I've spoken with have shared. There isn't a single way to be a mother, wife, or woman. We are all different and it's up to each of us to do the work and find our path. Swazi, thank you as always for the easy laughs, hard truths and for just being you. We've come to the end of the show folks. I'll see you all again next week Sunday. Till then, stay blessed.